Let's talk about greatness. Sometimes greatness is born out of the gate. An immediate rush to appeal to loftier heights than the competition has struck before. Sometimes people are naturally gifted, sometimes they have to work through the mire and the muck day in and day out to better themselves to become great. And a lot of the times, the truly great ones are the ones from humble beginnings, where they fall repeatedly, they mess up, and can even become a bit of a laughingstock. But through sheer will and perseverance, they pick themselves back up over and over again to keep walking on, allowing the footfalls of their mistakes to be nothing more than footfalls upon a path that they tread for themselves. Over the year, we have been doing a series on this channel, my top 10 video game stories of all time. And we have reached the pinnacle, the zenith, number one. My favorite video game story of all time is Final Fantasy XIV. And the reason that I think it personifies greatness is for not just the story that it tells in the game, that in my opinion is the best story ever told in a game, but also the story surrounding the game itself. When the game initially launched all those years ago, it was a cataclysmic failure. It was a joke, a laughingstock, a representation of the continued decline of the franchise as a whole. But they brought in Yoshi P, Naoki Yoshida, and through the entire team's sacrifice, perseverance, inspiration, and imagination, they pulled the game up from the brink of defeat and financial failure to drag the game across the finish line into 2.0, a realm reborn. A story that would not only completely change the landscape of Final Fantasy XIV's world, but also the game itself. And from then on, each step of the way, the story just treaded in the right direction. A Realm Reborn had its missteps. It was a great game in my opinion, and a really solid RPG. And then when you come to Heaven Sword, in my opinion, that is a game of the year quality experience. It is immaculate. An interesting narrative interwoven with complex themes and motifs, told in an interesting way with stellar music to accompany it all, and a giant climactic moment that still gets me excited all these years later. You transition into Stormblood that takes a slight step down in my opinion, but it's still a solid game and could be a game of the year contender in whatever year it comes out in. But then you get to the Stormblood patch story, and oh my god it's a return to form like we had never seen before. It was incredible, and the mystery that it wove throughout its narrative to connect us to Shadowbringers hooked me to my core and made me fully send off on this joyride of an experience that Final Fantasy XIV would quickly become. But it wouldn't be my number one video game story of all time at that point. When we hit Shadowbringers is when it climbs into that lofty height. I have talked about before how I believe Shadowbringers is the greatest story. By itself, that's how good of an experience Shadowbringers is. From beginning to middle to end, it is an experience truly worthwhile and memorable. Able to introduce a completely new location into a game hundreds of hours into its main story already. Introduce an entirely new location, but to hook the player in there and make me not want to leave. I had become invested in the first and its various characters. The world itself was engaging, and that is so hard to do when you're so invested in a different world. But Shadowbringers was the best representation and microcosm of how Square Enix tells its narrative the best. And the book closed on Shadowbringers, and I was fully satisfied with every aspect of that narrative. I even liked the Wild West Town filler arc we had. I liked that. And then it comes to Endwalker, the conclusion of a story, years in the making, expansions in the making. And to properly conclude a narrative that long, and to continue to hook the player, is a monumental task, and in my opinion, they absolutely nailed it. I even prefer Endwalker in some regards over Shadowbringers, because in my opinion, Endwalker makes Shadowbringers an even better experience, which is hard to think and fathom when you're only up to Shadowbringers. But Endwalker just ties it all together in a nice clean bow and wraps up the narrative in a beautiful way. The story of Final Fantasy XIV is a rags to riches story. It started as a cataclysmic disappointment, an absolute failure of an MMO and an RPG, but they stuck to it. 
and they tried and they tried some more to form their own identity and to walk their own path and eventually the game would take on an identity all of its own. It was a Final Fantasy game first and an MMORPG second and it was all the better for that. It had its formula, it knew its formula, the formula worked and they stuck with it. And by doing so, they were able to tell one of the most captivating, engaging, and interesting narratives I have ever had the pleasure of experiencing. It would take me hours to go over every plot detail and every reason why this story works, from engaging characters to incredible character development between each expansion to a throughput storyline that hooks you in and refuses to let go each step of the way, to understanding how to build a world, how to develop a new setting, and to make you care about it, and how to integrate that with the world we already know and established. It knows how to weave mystery and intrigue, and how to slowly unravel those threads to not only give you a deeper appreciation for the game you are playing, but for the story as a whole. Nothing goes to waste. Elements of the narrative from A Realm Reborn become of narrative import in Endwalker. The foreshadowing is incredible, the story immaculate, the characters just fun, and they work with the story. From hype encounters and moments to extremely sorrowful and emotional moments, the game knows how to pace those quick, light-hearted moments alongside the deep, slow, emotional ones. They know when they need to just take a step back and to let the characters breathe and speak for themselves and when they need to move the plot along. And people will say that of course they can tell a cool story. Look how long it is. Do you have any idea how hard it is to keep people engaged on this scale for that length of time over all these years? and for people to still be hooked, for people to sometimes go back and even play it all again, for people to be in such a frenzy to experience it all over again that they're willing to watch other people play through 500, 600 hours of an RPG story just to watch someone else experience it all for the first time. It is that special. There is nothing, in my opinion, that comes remotely close. For me, for my top 10 video game stories of all time, it's Final Fantasy XIV and number one, and then there's distance to number two. That is not a knock on numbers 10 through two, that is just to illustrate how much I respect and adore Final Fantasy XIV. Even the bad parts of Final Fantasy XIV are better than many other games' best aspects when it comes to narrative, because Final Fantasy XIV allows you to experience most of its narrative at your own pace. There's a main story that you have to go through, sure. There's a lot of other interesting and fun side quests that flesh the world out and develop these locations and to give you interesting identities to these various regions. And they are fun, they're exciting, they can be emotional, and they flesh the world out in an interesting way that these large-scale open-world MMORPGs can only do, unlike anything else in the competition. Final Fantasy XIV contains one of the most compelling worlds of any game I have ever played. And time and time again, when you think they may not be able to live up to the hype, they somehow find a way to continue on. I even love the Endwalker post story. A little bit slow in parts, but on the whole, I really liked it. And with a free trial that now encompasses a Realm Reborn, Heaven Sword, and Stormblood, to me, do yourself a favor. Experience the greatest story this medium has ever told. It is one of those experiences that I truly wish I could experience all over again for the very first time. But on the same hand, I don't. Because those moments when I first experienced it are memories I'll treasure forever. That is how good of a narrative Final Fantasy XIV is. It lives up to all the hype, even when you think it can't. It is a game I treasure, I will treasure forever, and a game that I can't wait to see where it goes in the future, and what stories it has yet to tell. And with that, I think I'll call the video there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in, my pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out and helps support future content, and I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe, have a great day, go play some video games if you can, and as always, I'll see you all next time. Leave a comment down below with your favorite memory from Final Fantasy XIV. Or if you haven't played it, let me know if you want to try, try it out and play it. I would fully recommend it. Stay safe, have a great day, go play some video games if you can, and as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.